hi guys and girls welcome to uh, this week's video and it is a cream back shootout okay i think this video is going to end up being a little bit longer than your average speaker shootout so i'm gonna save save you a bit of time if you want and let you know we talk for a few minutes then we've got clean rhythm rhythm and lead yeah. um for each of these speakers then we give a bit of a sum up and then we give you a little bonus section where there's uh, what they sound like with a more metal styled riff higher gain we've got the timestamps below if you want to click on those um so you can just hear what they, they sound like if you don't really care what we think okay the, the reason i think this video is important is because we get this a lot and it's people coming to us and saying hey i want this cab and i want it with a cream back in Mm. and the straight away i say okay cool i love all the cream backs but there are actually four um yeah, here we go <laughs> um when you look at uh, a lot of amp manufacturers uh, people who make cams um shops websites that kind of stuff often you'll see this is our one by 12 it's uh, loaded with a cream back Mm. and it's it's just really quite confusing um i love all these speakers which is a, is a great place to start so if i'd be more than happy to pick up any cab with a cream back in as long as the cab's good i'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to get a good sound out yeah. of it but they are quite specific and they do do certain jobs slightly better than the other yeah i think it's fair to say that the cream back uh, range of speakers are probably some of our favorites aren't they but um yeah. but how do they come about then right um a brief history of the cream back um right here, we've got an old one here and right this may not be 100 percent accurate so uh leave a comment if you if you know otherwise but my um understanding of the the cream back was that sometime in the 70s i'm guessing kind of early 70s because i think these came out of a 74 something uh, a 74 marshall, marshall right. I, I don't know artist or uh, 412 actually um and it was just to do with the pigment the pla uh, the plastic they had the green backs and as far as i'm aware the the uh the green pigment i don't know went into a shortage so this is essentially a green back yeah basically yeah plastic cover on the back yeah that's that, as far as i'm aware you get um there's not so many of these about you don't see them too much um I like my old Celestian speakers. I've got quite a, a collection, and I've probably only got—I don't know—I've probably got about a dozen of the, the cream backs. We'll have they, to dig those out for a video, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think that's going to be a good video. Um, most of um, most of the ones you see, the green backs with a different um, cover on the on the magnet, are the black backs, which mm. tend to be the the later seventies. Right. Um, and then they seem to not put covers on most of their speakers, so I, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> What, during the 80s? and yeah, 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 kind of 80s. Lots of those would just be the silver stickers. Yeah. Um, right, this this speaker itself, you, you'll see when Joe held it up, it's a 25 watt, so it's not actually any high, higher powered. When Celestian brought out the cream back range, um, they, started with the, they started with the M, and that was, I'm going to guess, seven or eight years ago, so kind of 2013, 2012, something like that. And that was... A high-powered greenback so that's supposed to be your M greenback but that can take 65 watts rather than 25 watts mm. um, I think a lot of people you probably notice in the last 10 years people are coming down from 412s down to 212s down to 112s um, 100 watt amps down to sort of 50 watts 35s 18s that kind of thing so if you've got a 112 with the green back there's not actually that many amps you can play if you've got 112 with one of these you can play the most back of them. Is 20, it's 25 yeah. watts um so yeah the with these basically this vintage 60, 65 this is yeah. 65 so vintage british sound without limitation on the power or with a better limitation on the power as uh, as usual when people try and recreate old sounds they often tend to make something new that's good in of itself don't they so i think the the yeah. Evan cream back that we know now has got its own sort of character that's... it's got its own vibe i think they actually do quite well at the at getting that kind of uh vintagey what i call like a vintage british kind of vibe basically yeah. can you play thin lizzie <laughs> yeah. but uh, that that said i wouldn't say it's just a green back sound is it it's kind of no i think that's well I, me saying vintage british doesn't really help this that kind of makes you think just 
just thin mm. lizzy and, and that those kind of sounds but no you uh, even with the green bash you can get some really cool all sorts of sounds good cleans mm. and you can push them up through into real like heavier higher Definitely. higher gain we've had loads of um kind of gent players using the m's yeah. um the h's often um let's talk about the h yeah the h queen back this is great this came after the m i don't know about a year or so more uh year or so later it's 75 watts but this speaker is rated at 100 uh db rather than i think it's 97 on the m so it's a, it's a lot louder mm. so even though it's 10 watts uh 10 watts more than the m it's actually a it's a pretty loud speaker um and because of the sensitivity rate, and this one gets mixed in with a vintage thirty quite a lot. Yeah. Um, great speaker for for mixing in. You get. Um, it's got its own kind of characteristic. We were talking earlier, and the word we came out with was a bit more nasal sounding, but yeah. not in a bad way. Not in a. It's a, it's a really bold sounding speaker, I think, to me. Yeah, it's yeah. still a bold sound. It's got a lot of character to yeah. it, but it's there's a couple of things in there that kind of. Uh, I don't know. Just cut, put it down. It's a bit of a lump that one. <laughs> that, that kind of cut through. I stand out a bit more, which is why mixing with a vintage thirty, mm. um, I think works works really and well. That's been a really really uh, popular combination for yeah. people getting like Fat Boy two by twelves. Fat Boy and the Studio Pro yeah. as well. Um, the Studio Pro often used to go with a H anniversary and a vintage thirty, but again you're working off the weaker speakers uh, which is the or the least powerful speaker which is the H anniversary in that case and it gives you a 60 watt 60 watt cab mm. with this the vintage 30 would be the least powerful speaker so you've got 120 watt cab so in a 212 120 watts uh, you're pretty safe with most yeah, amps definitely any, any amps you want to stand next to anyway <laughs> yeah right <laughs> I would say if you're putting 120 watts so you say two vintage 30s or two of these or this in the vintage 30 your problem isn't going to be that you're blowing the speakers the problem is you're going to go and uh, you're going to need to see a doctor <laughs> right so where does this is this one the next one in the i think the i line? think so <laughs> <laughs> i guess this is about five or six years ago so uh mid 2010s um again just like all the creambacks high powered version of something that's been made before yeah so this was supposed to be oh it's just a high powered alnico um, check out some of our other Al Nico videos and we'll say quite a lot this actually sounds kind of got a very similar vibe to the blue hasn't it mm. you could kind of switch them out and you yeah. wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be unhappy you wouldn't have to re but whereas much. a blue is only 15 watts this is 90, 90. Yeah, so. yeah so you've got no again you've got next to no kind of power mm. restrictions there this is one of my favourite speakers for lead playing especially like um Hopefully you'll hear that in the recordings, but um, yeah, for lead, I love the only Yeah, Green. it's just a, it's a really nice warm sound, but it still cuts through. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's really good. Uh, it's expensive though, so you won't often <laughs> see that many. I know two by twelve. I think their rep described it as their Rolls Royce speaker. Yeah. 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 Okay, next up, Neo Creamback. Um, bit easier I, to pick up. That one. Bit easier, <laughs> right? This is super light. Um, in the past. Neo speakers um, have kind of got a rep for being quite quite bright, but we we um, found a bunch of uh, Century Vintage a few months back, didn't mm. we? And Joe had never played one, so we just bunged them in a cab, and they were sounding really cool. Yeah. So I don't know, with a bit of going back to them ten years after. Yeah. Um, they was they were sounding really good, but anyway, uh, Neo Creamback again. I think this is the point where Celestian sort of nailed the uh, the Neo speaker for guitarists on the head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, it should probably explain. Neo refers to the magnet. So you've got uh, most guitar speakers would be a ferrite magnet. So basically, um, or they often called a ceramic magnet, but it's, mm. it's basically iron in there, some compound of iron. Um, the Alnico is an Alnico. So it's aluminium, nickel and cobalt in a magnet. Um, some compound of that anyway and that's um, a bit rare and a bit more expensive so I think that was the common thing before the war right and then yeah, something to do with the war they had to switch to using a different material because it's basically available. cheaper yeah so and more available the neodymium speaker is lighter um, because 
you effectively need less magnet to get the same amount of magnetic flux. Um, the magnet itself has a about I think it's about 10 times the magnetic flux density so you need a magnet that's a tenth of the size so um, with most of the weight on these speakers on a normal speaker being the magnet um, you basically got the weight of the chassis yeah you hold that yeah and I'll hold this one so you're talking here I think the spec sheets say 4.7 kilos and I think these are 1.7 so you've you just say difference in there yeah that's the and that's with the cover on it's actually yeah. a tiny magnet in there yeah um so you're saving three kilos per speaker that's noticeable in a small one by 12 so imagine what it's like in a four by 12. Mm. oh by the way check out our, our video on lightweight cams that's that's worth a watch uh we made a a 412 that was less than 30 kilos right yeah so that was um, yeah that's that's always good um and tonally yeah, it sounds, it sounds great. Um, it's, it probably stands out a little bit more than the others, but mm. again, it fits in that kind of what I'd call the cream back bracket. Yeah, definitely. Um, of speakers, we often mix them with again with a vintage third. It just keeps weight down. Um, or two speakers. I've got myself a few cabs with two or four of the uh, the neo creams in, it, and they sound great. So you're going to hear some sound examples now of the of all four speakers, um, starting off with clean. So I recorded parts in the computer, uh, and we used um, a bit of a song that we made for an ad we ran. Um, so each speaker, you're going to hear the same performance, basically reamped um, each time through each speaker. What we the reason we did that was I wanted to start introducing in comparison videos um, a smaller, more controlled segment. Mm. that although becomes not annoying but a bit <laughs> you know a little bit repetitive yeah. with four speakers it's not that bad i want to be we want to be able to consistent consistently splice between the four and i yeah. think that's where it's 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 a lot easier to do that and hear the individual characteristics yeah so yeah we're just running the same performance uh guitar part out uh, into uh mesa boogie stiletto uh, and then into the Fat Baby closed back cab we use for this. And that's mic'd up with a, a Bayer Dynamic M160 ribbon mic and a Shure SM57. And then after each recording, I also captured a impulse response of the setup um, so that we could capture a graph then to show you on the screen of the um, the frequency plot of, of each each speaker, basically. I think that's a, um, you can go to Celestium's website and see um, theirs. Theirs is probably a little bit more true to what the speaker itself is doing, but the reason we've done our own is because it gives you, it captures the whole system. Yeah. So microphone, um, amplifier speaker cabinet all that kind of stuff because obviously the celestian didn't use the same gear as what we did so um, you can see that well the frequency plot of what we've used <laughs> all right what, what we're going to do now is stop talking and let you listen to what they actually sound like what you came here for um we're going to give a little rundown of what we thought um after afterwards <laughs>
now so you've all heard them you've hopefully seen um the individual characteristics um how they sit in in a well a bit more of a mix with the rhythm and the lead kind of lead playing mm -hmm. um let us know what you think below 
what I think is that I would be happy using any of them. Yeah, right. There's, um, well, for me, I, I really enjoyed all the sounds there. Um, I especially enjoyed the Alnico for lead, but I kind of was expecting that going in anyway, so I don't know if I'm a bit biased there. But um, for rhythm, I really like the H. Um, but then, yeah, anything really. The the M's really cool sound. It's a lot more rolled off, I think, than the than the H. Yeah, I like the M, um, kind of by itself. I've mm. I've always just had a thing for that speak. I've 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 very rarely found a situation where I haven't been able to use it. And as a guy who's often uses hundred watt Marshalls, but two by twelves, when that first thing came out, when that came out, even though I would run two greenbacks in the like a 50 watt cam and risk it um, I don't know I just I just really like yeah. I really like that speaker I love the Neos just because the, the weight saving is so so useful it allows a lot of players to go for a heavier larger yeah. cam and overall keep the weight down I so there's hope, less of yeah. a compromise there uh, hopefully you hear there isn't really a compromise with the sound as well I think maybe slightly less depth uh, to the character maybe slightly less dynamic than the other speakers but still a really really cool sound yeah I think that it also kind of comes to life a bit in in small accounts we use a fat baby for this which is about uh, which is what I'd class as like an oversized 112 mm. I mean, it's not freakishly large but it's it's pretty big it's as deep as a fat boy or standard yeah, well, 112 yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's I don't know like about eighty percent of the width of of, uh, of a fat boy two by twelve, so so it is a big cap. Um, yeah, I think that really that one in small one twelves mm. um, is re- like a uh, like a mini stack or a dinky. I think the sound you get from that and the weight for the weight is yeah. just massive. Um, you can take on much bigger cabs, much heavier cabs. Um, we we haven't tested that one in this. Just we just brought it in for a, just to show you. For my brief history of the <laughs> yeah. Greenback. So last time we did a shootout, uh, we had a load of questions asking for what the speaker sounded like in a heavier context. So we just recorded a little little riff here. Uh, hopefully, it'll give you a snapshot of what these speakers do. Um, yeah, with a with a heavier sound. So we get quite a lot of customers using these for for heavier playing styles. Um, I think originally people would be scared off uh, by people like me saying they're high powered versions of vintage British speakers but they're they're really not forget that yeah. um, you can use them for all sorts and they are actually super popular with the, with the heavy players um, so yeah take a listen to this and again let us know what you think <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there and the notification bell. And let us know what you think. Any comments, anything you want to see, anything you've liked in this, anything you haven't liked. Uh, <laughs> just, just let us know. Give us some feedback and uh, we'll see you next week.